Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. October 3rd, 2021. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I am Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. <laughs> that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, which is Determined the Length, episode number 619. <laughs> What the hell was that? <laughs> Mixing it up, making it different, doing some things. Let's go. Like, like, yeah. Having some fun. Wow. Either what's going on. So, woo! The <laughs> most excitement I've had all day. <laughs> wow. So, let's find out what's going on. Uh, same old dance training, uh, playing Final Fantasy 14. Uh, I haven't streamed for a couple of weeks, mainly because, uh, I kind of slipped through my start time and just didn't feel up to streaming. So instead yes. I've been doing, doing basically what I've been doing in streaming, except I've been productive with some other things such as uh, living up my other job. So that's mm. it. Otherwise it's pretty much the same old dance. Damon, how about you? Ooh, that was quick. So kind of the same old thing, same old da- same old song, same old dance, you know, same old song, different meaning since you've been gone. <sighs> anyway, um, I don't know. anyway, so really like kind of like Jeff said, mostly been doing work, getting up, um, going to work, coming, you know, getting done with work, chilling, watching YouTube. Then every once in a while, I'll play some D&D at, you know, nearby or at a friend's house or whatever. Um, that's been fun. Um, the big thing, I guess, that has changed, um, I think I mentioned it last month. Um, the chorus will has officially started um, our in-person rehearsals. Um, we are um, rehearsing for the holiday show. We are separating for now, so the tenors are one week, and then the bass and bears are the following week. Um, but that doesn't mean the tenors don't do anything; they just they should be listening to the rehearsal files, et cetera, et cetera. So it's been interesting. Um, we've shortened rehearsals. We are all wearing masks. We're all, we're doing all of this stuff to just make it as comfortable for everyone as possible. Um, Everyone is vaccinated that is there. We require vaccinations. So, yeah, um, it's been good. (laughs) Um, I think it's going to be a bit of a learning curve where, you know, some of us have not sung since we, um, you know, took off from after COVID, the pandemic started. So, um it's it's a little noticeable um getting those the instrument back into you know back into order when we were rehearsing every week for several months at a time and then singing concerts you know we're not do we weren't doing that some people weren't doing that some are um we did the virtual stuff but that's a little different you know you had everything in front of you you could listen to the rehearsal file while you're singing the song you didn't have to worry about memorization or any of that shit so i have a feeling this is going to be um a bit of a wake-up call for people that you know this isn't going to be like it was before and it's not going to be like it was 
two years ago. This is different. So get ready. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. But yeah, uh, other than that, um, pretty much just, you know, it's weird that it's October. Yeah, I was just realizing it like it's fucking October. My birthday is in 22 days. Yeah, odd. Anyway, Gary? Um, I feel like this past month was just a lot of my main job, uh, HIV work. Part of it had to do with the fact that we did our fourth annual HIV AIDS awareness walk at the end of the month, um, just this past week. So, uh, it's funny because, or I guess ironic, my director sent an email afterwards, um, and I don't think it was just to myself and my compatriot um on the sti side i think it was like not a whole house but like a limited team but basically said people don't realize how much work and effort it takes you know to put into an event like this so on and so forth congrats on you know the work that you did and so yeah. on and so i was like oh yeah, that's interesting and nice um that. yeah so but um yeah trying to get a lot of um things organized and then you know um that's what it felt like it like that's what it, it seemed like everything kind of revolved around that for the whole month mm. it was you know a lot of that focus and right now we have two state uh reports that are due so that's like the next focus you know i think it's great that you're actually doing your job <laughs> you had i mean Considering what you're doing for most of last year, yeah, yeah I it's know. nice that you're actually other work for the yeah. department. Still working for the department, just well. Not what so you were what's originally I... hired for? Yeah. Well, what's ironic about that is is now doing the state report. Yeah, that's fun to like because they added a whole new section of like how did the COVID nineteen affect your ability to do your job <laughs> like, oh well here is one of the many ways tap 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 they, like, they made it so i couldn't do it because i was working on that yeah so anyways it was just you know oh. kind of one of those things but yeah i mean i spent a whole a lot of time focusing on that and um it did seem to pass quickly yeah September went fast. Or maybe I'm maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I feel I don't know. Yeah, I mean some people have reached out and been like, you know, what have you been up to? And I was like, work. Lots of it. Like <laughs> lots of work. You know, and just trying to get some things done. And now we're down into the last three months of the year already. And I'm still kind of up uh, uh, getting acclimated to my new job because I started this like two months ago maybe mm. maybe it was just a month mm. and a half or something but I don't know when the Olympics happen I knew that was a couple of weeks before the Olympics August? <laughs> August? Sorry. did you guys read the live chat yeah please please phrase or perhaps phrases <laughs> doing your actual job yes <laughs> 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 yeah, that's just. Hey, thank you for saying some in chat gray so that I know that I can see the chat using my new little interface here. I am very happy working. Yay! <clears throat> okay. Yeah, no, I mean, that is fair that, you know, I was doing my actual job, but yeah, I still haven't effectively done it for a year. Mm. Yeah. Like time wise. <laughs> yeah. We barely had two months, and then it was the pandemic. And then, in theory, uh, mid to late January of this year was when I was supposed to go back and doing it again. So, I guess <laughs> in another 45 days-ish, <laughs> I will have done 12 months of it. Mm. Quote, quote. With a yeah. large break? Yes. Well, one oh. of the things I realized is, like, one of the main things that I was hired for i got trained on very first 
as like requirements through the state and then like you know this whole pandemic thing happened and then like mm. so looking back on the report i was like yeah does it look like i really did that thing because i was busy doing all these other things i think what i'm finding challenging in the moment is i have taken on doing more of the other stuff that the that the kind of what my grant is there for the grant exists for two positions for two people but anyways like because there isn't much supervision and oversight <clears throat> um <laughs> it's what you make of it what you do with it so to speak mm -hmm. and so yeah that's i think the 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 lesson i'm learning going into the next year is the balancing act of that kind of stuff because i'm not really getting leadership <laughs> to help with that so so we'll see how that goes yeah, you know. yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I mean that was kind of that was kind of it, and I mean, and, and I feel like it's not going to stop because World AIDS Day comes up on December first, so I've got barely two months to like pull some of that stuff together, um, and then, yeah, and then it'll be the end of the year, and it'll be twenty twenty two, and who knows what that will include. God. Do we really want to start talking about twenty twenty two? Hey, so here's my philosophy on that. I do for the briefest moment because I'm just going to put this caveat out there. Uh oh, everybody, here we go. No, no. Here's my here's my deal. Like, because because we don't talk about last year. So because lots of people have difficulty keeping track of time anymore because we basically all lost a year. Um, so it cracks me up when people try to talk about things and I've done it. And some people who are really with it are like, well, you mean 2019 and I'm like, right. Last year. Cause we don't talk about last year. <laughs> we, don't talk, we don't talk about that span of time. So I really feel like 2021 has been the recovery from the year. We don't talk about mm -hmm. so 2022 is my expectation of like, where the the rhythms of our lives kind of come back in, in cycle with us mm. because i think some people were a, a little um i don't know i guess i want to say too easy to just like jump right back into the pool and i was mm. like oh no honey no mm -mm. like has oh. that water been sanitized like has this been treated has anyone been around like their lifeguard here like the like the whole <laughs> perspective on life shifted dramatically and we i think for quite some time will still be dealing with the effects because you know the every every system every industry has been has had to adjust Right. There's something something has happened with it. Like I got something in the mail from my father on Friday the first and it said it needed to be returned by the postal service by Friday the first. And I was like, No, that's not how this happens. <laughs> no. You can't return something by the deadline when the day it arrives is the deadline. Like I think they misjudged for some reason the USPS being able to deliver it in a reasonable time frame. Um and the fact that the mail is apparently about to slow down even more, like there's just things along those lines that folks aren't comfortable with, you know, and with the part-time job that I have dealing with payroll, you know, people understandably, you know, legitimately have some major criticisms about like the expediency of things, you know, to get stuff done. Well, when it involves a human being and there's only so many of them to go around, that becomes a bottleneck. And if you make things, if 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 there is a requirement that things have to be physical hard copies, notarized, signed, mm -hmm. and a digital signature isn't possible, like all that stuff, like really kind of becomes a factor. And so I don't think some people understand. That DocuSign yeah. has made a shit ton of money. Yeah. And if if it's half. acceptable, but not a lot of people, especially not everything accepts it. Yeah, but still, I'm gonna. I guess I'm gonna say it this way especially certain people of certain backgrounds, experiences, lifestyles, income levels, mm -hmm. they don't even know about that kind of stuff. So you find yourself educating them yeah. about how, you know, digital signatures are, what a wet signature is. Like, I mean, you know, I'm trying to explain all these different things and where mm -hmm. to go to get a printout if they don't have a printer um, mm -hmm. you know, or money to yeah, fact had, things so one of the things we decided to do for the chorus this year um was we 
told everyone, like, please print your own music. Um, as a kind of a precaution because of COVID, we didn't want a whole bunch of people standing around in the same space waiting for music to be given to them. Mm-hmm. So we like, go sit down and, and you should have your music or you can get it on a, you know, tablet or whatever. And um, we got some pushback. A lot of pushback. Apparently, fortunately, I guess I should say, none of it came to the music librarian. Um, <laughs> but um, we ended up purchasing um, more copies than we were planning on purchasing. We had planned on purchasing just some for new members who might be joining us so that they would have it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we realizing we hadn't done it in a while, um, it was not cheap to print this stuff anymore and get these copies done. And even us that has like a, we thought we had a discount. No, I mean, we had something, but it was not nearly as much as it used to be. So I'm a little surprised um, that we printed so much, first of all, and then that we we still have people, we have people saying like, well, I can't do it at home. I can't get it at home. I can't, you know, print it off somewhere. And I'm like, okay, well, we'll see what we can do. And fortunately we do have enough, but it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a very interesting year when we kind of try to keep this going. So, yeah. Yeah. I, and Mm. there's just been you know a whole upheaval in the in the just in the occupational like employment field kind of sector mm. um i think the year of staying home really opened up people's eyes to like the slog you know what i mean of like the daily life and whether or not they want to do something that is relevant mm. um to them or has meaning or whatever because i see that there are lots of you know there's a lot of debate it seems about job openings versus people versus like pay benefits and and all that and there's part of me that's like um kind of comes down to personal happiness like why would you want to do something if you don't feel it's worth it so Mm -hmm. but that's kind of a a personal issue for folks Um, so yeah for us it's been difficult Yeah, I mean, and and I feel bad when I, you know, especially in the part-time job, because I'm, you know, speaking to people on the phone, they're, (laughs) they're like, you're the first competent person I've talked to. And I'm thinking, really? Like, I don't, Mm. that's necessarily the case. I think there's a much more likelihood that um, I've sort of shifted to a, I give no fucks kind of attitude. Um, And by that, I mean, no, 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 hear me out. (laughs) <laughs> here's here's why because businesses have these kpis these key performance indicators these like you know goal posts milestones whatever like you know measurements and i kind of am not fretting about that too much you know because it, and what it comes down to is like do you want quality do you want quantity mm. like you kind of need to figure something out and i'd rather have quality where people are actually assisted and you know the time is taken and things are explained that's what folks need but you know it it takes time to do that so there will be some people who will pick things up as you're talking to them just bing bang boom and there are other people that you're gonna have to spend more time with it's just mm. like radio. well mm-hmm. and, and and you know i'm probably the wrong person because i used to train um one call resolution so mm. while that is not an edict from the client, that is pretty much what I apply. Mm. Like I'm trying to do as everything that I can, as much as I can within my capacity to, to resolve things or get certain things done. But I've also noticed I don't really get a whole lot of criticism, especially like very, 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 very rarely get a kickback on a case that I submit in which mm. they're like, you know, you shouldn't have done this. This is wrong. You don't know what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. Like I was amused because about a week and a half ago, I got one kickback and the supervisor was like, could you read this for me? And I read it and I was like, I don't know what this is about. They're like, I don't know either. They're like, I'll take care of it. Mm. <laughs> like, like they were complaining about like what I did, but their complaint had nothing to do with the actual context of what started it or why I submitted it. We were all like, what the hell? I was like, maybe they wrote a comment on the wrong case. Oh, 
it's highly abused. My God, Gary. <laughs> what? Where did you get these bears? Get them. For the for the the the, the background. Baby, I made them. Oh, they're so I mean, cute. Technically <laughs> I edited them. They're so cute. <laughs> Sorry, random. Don't mind me. Yeah. They're very so adorable. In, the right direction. <clears throat> in any case, uh, Gary apparently is an excellent artist. No, seriously. Like, I wanted, I was, so these are the same, these are not the identical, but they are the same base ones from last month. Ah. And then I was annoyed because I was like, I want a little bit more like representation that kind of is slightly more aligned. So um, I started fussing with one. And then, of course, because I did that, I had to like fuss with all of them. So now. Yeah, we got all of them. Yeah. Love it. Don't mind me. I'm I'm, I'm amused by the fact that you completely stopped and derailed. Sure did. (laughs) Sure did. You know what? You know what? It, it, it sounds like uh, <laughs> we we're, can move we're on. ready for this. <laughs> Gary, what's been going on over the first place? Uh, we have three new likes uh, from four people. I'll explain in a second. Uh, so we would like to thank the following individuals for liking our uh, page on Facebook. William Mallard, Travis Genenbacher, or Genenbacher. And then one profile that says Dick, Daryl, Richard, Dominic. Which I think is a couple. Because mm. I was thoroughly confused. Because I when I saw the name in the link, I was like, wait, how many people is this? Like, at first I thought it was four. Then I thought it was, like two but it's just one and there were two people in the profile picture so i think it's just a couple but yeah, yeah so my thanks for Darryl, my brother daryl <laughs> my other brother daryl nice <laughs> mr david what about over in youtube this past month so we have a new subscriber on youtube and that is enrique balzaretti Ooh. hello um, and then how about yeah? Over on the Twitterverse, <laughs> we have a new follower of Manuel R two nine one or three nine one six two five seven eight. Because again, the numbers. Uh, we yeah, also but, had yeah. Uh, mm. No, I was just gonna say Jeff and David might want to actually look at that profile because I'm pretty sure that like. Check the box for for y'all. But anyways, go on. (laughs) Here we go. Derailment copy. Uh, And we also got a comment from uh, Owen over on Twitter. Uh, (laughs) AWQ underscore Owen. O-A-N. On the 30th saying, I'm missing Gary's tit. Oh. (laughs) As comes out loud. Oh. (laughs) With the power hour. Oh, was that the full, full? Was that the full tweet? Did we missed something on there because I swear it mentioned something about the power hour. That was what I saw. Like, so I believe that was a reference to your birthday uh, celebration deal. Um, so, yeah. Mm. Huh? Yeah, uh, Damon, did yeah. you check that? That sure did. <laughs> There's the reason why David's getting all <laughs> Twitter painted if a clumped over there because uh-huh. <laughs> he clicked Check. on the link and or clicked the search and started, you know, looking at yeah. the Oh, oh my. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, while while Damon's being uh distracted, Gary, what's it, uh, tell us about our past month. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we had four shows this past month that we a uh, month ago. Uh we did episode six fifteen, which is what's going on for the month of August. Then we did a let's talk about food gross foods edition, things that we are not necessarily fans of. And I think in that episode we also talked about like the changing of taste, like how when we were younger, certain foods didn't appeal to us, but as we got older, we changed that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Mr. Edward Angelini Cook joined us again as uh, our resident sex therapist for Landscape of Relationships. And this time it was Struggle Bus Baby. Um, so this was, you know, about conflict of relationships. 
And then last week, uh, we did a kind of a random episode, so to speak, not a part of any series, and it was The Thickness of It All for episode 618. And this was just more about the the shifting cultures of body representation and how we feel about that and if we really think that that really is the case or do we have cultural bias like because of how we cultivate our own social media of what we like and what we share and what the logarithms, you know, bring into that. Like, does that, is that all playing into it? Like, are we, you know, feeling like there's more men out there that are appealing to us? For example, Um, (laughs) Mr. Manuel probably would not have shown up on my feed as someone I would be interested in. However, he definitely hits several of the buttons. Mr. Daddy Leather Bear looking motherfucker, like hi, <laughs> like yeah, that that that's that's yeah yeah. Oh my, mm-hmm. I didn't even get to the September twenty eighth like TikTok video. Uh huh. Even but anyways, yeah, yeah. He told you. Anyway, wow. moving along, moving right along, moving right along, moving right along. Speaking <laughs> speaking of, speaking of, speaking of right. Twitter. <laughs> That we did in the past month. <laughs> uh, hold on. I'll put a link to the tweet. And, he, and yes, I did find the full tweet is I miss seeing Gary's tits at the Hopes Out Loud Power Hour. Oh. Why didn't I get the rest of the text? That's weird. I don't know, but I did find the tweet. Uh, in any case, we're, we're, we're talking about uh, uh, tweets. <laughs> All right, before a copyright uh, uh, claim gets applied to, to the video, which, by the way, is, doesn't really do anything. Yeah. Uh, so mine, I'm not going to open it up because it is a video. Uh, it is all piggy. Oh, my. And we have a bald, a big, bald, beautiful man. Uh, that one on gay his, guy. On his hands. At that one gay guy. Yeah. On his hands and knees, um, and uh, he has a. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's a prostate massager. Probably like a hush or something or something along those lines. As I'm kind of, I'm not putting the video up because I don't want the sound to come through. But and, pretty sure um, he's having a really good time. Yeah, and it's a view from. Uh, the back and it's the view from the front at the same time so look at him being all multi-talented and giving us two views that's nice it has lots of boning for the record Uh uh-huh wow i like the soundtrack i'm just gonna say that he he, he is vocal he also uh he does get some uh more piggy sounds later on in the video I think it's again a good minute and a half or so. I'm wondering okay. if someone else has this program. Again, I'm not I not I'm not opening it up because I don't want that sound to be going through. Oh, it's open on my end. <laughs> Just wait for it. Okay. Um yeah, I had to listen to it just like a little bit of it. Um Okay, so uh, about a minute twenty seconds in, that's what yeah. it is. Yeah, that's what I was getting. That's where I'm at. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need you to, um, I, I, mm, I, ooh, it's okay. Great. I'm gonna, I love yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I kind of like that. Ooh, okay, that that hit a. <laughs> I might have to write that down and save that for later because that hit a button that didn't. I wasn't sure I. Huh. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Moving on. We need to I move did on. retweet it on my own feed, though. So. Yeah. I, I'll just keep it open for right now and listen to I'm it. I'm also it's kind of intrigued stuff. where he lives. Well, his friend can door live anywhere. Where, where opens anywhere? right onto his bedroom. Oh, and that happened at the end. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't expecting that, anyways. <laughs> Maybe we need to do an additional video or even uh, the, the, a, 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 maybe a 
day video where uh, we do like a reaction video. He's in Arizona. I do know that much. That would be fun to do a reaction video. Although the downside is it can't stream to YouTube. Like, like we could react, but we can't show what we're reacting to. Dude, we would like it. I know. I mean, we could also do just reaction videos for normal things like trailers and stuff. Well, there we go. This is the thought. Okay. Oh, hey. Anyways, David, what? You, oh, you have a couple of selections. Okay. Yes, I do have a couple. Um, so the first one is Mr. Uh, Jacob 04. Um, and it's Wanna Wrestle. Or Let's Wrestle is what he says, but I think I put down Wanna Wrestle. Oh, no, I put Let's Wrestle. Yeah. Um, uh, that's called uh, Nothing Left to the Imagination? No, absolutely. Nothing is left to the imagination. You've got a very. Oh, no, there's plenty. There's plenty of imagination. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, in this nice blue, like light blue um, singlet with um, orange and white stripes on the side, um, it is very form fitting, literally. Mm-hmm. Um, you can catch, you get all of the um, nuts and berries up in there. Yeah. Um, Twig and berries is what I was kind of meant to say. Uh, but yeah, um, nice bearded belt, you know, bearded guy, nice looking, great picture. Um, uh, let's go to the mats and see what happens is what I say. Um, ooh, okay. Um, oh, there, get that there. And then, um, the other one I have is, um, I titled it Just a Peak. But it's our favorite um, um, daddy bear, um, Mark, uh, a.k.a. Wolf Park or Part Wolf um, on Twitter. And it's just a peek. And it is a black and white photo. Um, he has um, his leather suspenders on, a, a tank top, and the jeans. And he has pulled them down just enough to where you get the peak of his um Josh strap. I just I just fucking love this picture. Love it. Uh, somehow I missed this one from Mark and I don't know how necessarily, but mm. I don't know why either, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. And hit the ink on his arm and just everything just uh Oh. Yeah. No, he looks good. good. But he always looks good, so. Yes. Yeah. It's just one of my favorite pictures. I couldn't let it go. <laughs> and I couldn't let it just pass. So that's why it's shared also. Yeah, that's one thing annoying about him. He always looks good. Ain't like, he cannot truth? look good. Mm. People. He's awake I don't. That head and just, he looks good. Mm. Yeah. I'm fine with it as long as he takes a picture and keeps it going. Mm. <laughs> Show me what you got. Just... Yeah. Gary? Um, so I have two as well. The first one is called Last Minute Throwback Thursday. Um, and this is from At the Bear of the Day. For those of you that don't know who At the Bear of the Day is, it uh, this is Brian. And he used to have King for a day, as in K-I-N-G-F-U-R-A-D-A-Y. Um, if you're old enough to remember, uh, like, the bear list and all of these other previous, like, kind of uh, early internet technologies before social media and stuff, he used to have a website that would post a brand new picture of a bear every single day. Mm-hmm. So yeah, anyways, he was part of the uh, 619 bear cast. And um, so Brian posted this picture and it says last minute throwback Thursday. This was in 2008 in a hotel bathroom in Bangalore, India, which oh, I didn't realize yeah. that he'd actually traveled to India um, in all the years I've known of him online uh, and stuff. And I actually met him once uh, many, many years ago when I traveled out to L.A., um, mm-hmm. San Diego, uh, yeah. met him and the guys from 619. Very nice guys. Anyways, Brian's been going through a whole lot of things uh, in his personal health journey in the past year or two. And so, um, like, I follow him and Joey and, you know, it's 
it's part of that whole kind of West Coast cluster of folks that I know and um, from the podcast and Hadrian and is friends with them and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, I just really appreciated that Brian shared it because he's a sexy fucker. And, yes, he is. Uh, what kind of cracked me up is that, you know, he kind of puts us up there and then I shared it. Then a couple of people that um, follow me were like, like, retweet. I was just kind of amused. So you know, <laughs> I was like, there you go. So some just some affirmation. Yeah, he's one of the... It's one of the few ones that I follow um, that I'm okay with because I know that he's he's posting pictures of other people, but he usually gives credit where credit is due. But he also is posting pictures of himself, which is always good to see. Right. Always good to see. Agreed. And then the other one that I have is called Happy Sunday. Um, and this is at positive six, six, one, zero, nine, four, three, six, um, who is an ex pro football player for the Baltimore Ravens who says, I love fitness, gaming, chill vibes. Hit me up. Let's chat. If I can't see who you are with a clear picture, I won't reply. Well, baby, this is a clear picture. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he is in his birthday suit and he is like sitting on the edge of a bed with a very strategically placed hand. Um, but remember how we were talking just last week about like big, thick padded like bodies. So like they're muscular, but they also have like, you know, fat over the muscle and it kind of, you know, makes them look a certain way. Mm-hmm. This is it. Oh, yeah. Like, um, I just think he's fucking gorgeous. I was oh, like, yeah, Jesus. Wow. OK. Nice. Hi. Um, I also have a like a really bad thing for men who, who play tall football. oh <laughs> well there's that i mean the tall helps but you know when they basically Jesus look like a linebacker i'm kind of like ah. <laughs> you know fucking christ so i don't know what his whole situation or story is um but he is body positive and that he likes taking pictures of himself he sure as does um so i don't know what his like you know orientation is or preference um Mm -hmm. Um, because i think a lot of these photos could be borderline thirsty mm -hmm. well and he has a retweet in there which is wow you see that i mean um oh there's that's a yeah i I think he was one of the ones one of the uh football players who had uh come out and he has since retired since they came out i'm not sure if it's he came out before he retired retired then came out because i know either way been weird but i believe there's at least a couple of people who are actually out and and still playing Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he's somewhere along the lines of that I Look think him. don't don't quote me on that. But Jesus. I'm gonna anyways. You okay there, David? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and follow. <laughs> well, if you got back to September eighth, you would see him wearing a nice Thundercats t shirt. So uh, like there's there's a little I geek to it. I haven't gotten that far. I've been there's just been a lot of like the the workout pictures and the tight shorts and and I mean also the very just like nothing <laughs> sometimes. God damn, he has a booty on him. Anyway, so yeah, she does. Yeah. Also oh, that. okay. Hello, September first. <laughs> that is that is all birthday suit baby in Uh-oh. a pose. The track, the, the, track the, track, the track the track is over here. The track the track is over here. Wait, what? Well, okay. you're, you're off track. What? You're back on track? I think I got a little distracted. You act like you're new to this show. <laughs> You've been around since the very beginning. This is the norm. Mm-mm-mm. Come on. Wow. There we go. Almost. <laughs> he does post a lot of pictures. I will give him that. Like he does. Like that's a lot of it is of, of him working out in his various attire. He, he's using Twitter. Twitter is like an Instagram. You know how Instagram okay. is primarily used for pictures. Is this? Uh, oh. Gary <laughs> must have found something else. 
Okay, well, uh, on August 5th, he replied with the gif of I volunteer from the Hunger Games. But what he's replying to is uh, someone who said looking for gay OnlyFans content creators in the San Fran uh, or San Francisco or or, sorry, Oakland area. Hit me up if you want a collab. And there is a gentleman who is butt ass naked with a big old peen uh, (laughs) like at three quarter mass that he replied to. So I was like, oh, okay. So this kind of goes to Jeff's point about possibly came out after. Yeah. Oh, there's a butt. Okay, there we go. Okay, so there we go. There we go. I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna I'm gonna close these pictures because I I. I... Uh huh. Whoo. Whoo. Okay. Damn. I didn't need to see all that. I didn't. I mean, I did. Thank God. But oh. <laughs> stop it, Gary. Stop right now. <laughs> Damn. I hate Twitter crops. I got all excited about a picture. He's wearing underwear. <laughs> what? It looked like he wasn't wearing nothing. I was like, oh, are we, are we actually going to find yeah. out how damaging it's going to be? Okay. So anyways. <laughs> all right. All right, we got two out of three who wants to get back on track. Uh, can we real? So anyways, those are my in? tweets. <laughs> you ready for links? <laughs> Let's go on to the links. Uh, mine. Okay, so I got a total of three links, but they're all to the same thing. Just you can get one. Uh, that the first two are for their respective sites. So if you have a premium Crunchyroll subscription, I got a link to there. If you got a premium Verve subscription, I got a link to there. Uh, well, actually, if you have, I, it might even be available in the free free mode too. But I got a link to both of those. It, the Verve is created by Crunchyroll, so that's why it's both in both. But uh, Digimon, Digimon, Digital Mantras, Digimon, uh, the champions. Well, the latest, or one of the latest versions. I think they might have started in another series already, but. Um, which is listed as Digimon Adventure colon. And then Crunchyroll just like put in parentheses 2020 to di- differentiate it from the original Digimon Adventure, which was the first series of Digimon. Mm-hmm. Um, they basically did a, a reimagining re-update of the first se- series. Mm-hmm. And um, and and released it and i've been watching that i'm already like 40 so uh, episodes in and it's so good it is mm. so good so it's a it's a new series yeah it was it re- released in 2020 um and it's up updated so they've got like cell phones versus oh. the 90s when the they had the little like beepers essentially well they had cell phones but they also had their digivices they're those are two separate things but uh yeah so they they're much up to date it wasn't they were all went to summer camp and from summer camp were thrown into digital world it works a little bit differently again complete reimagining of the uh, interesting uh and it's cool i i am enjoying it thoroughly this there's references, throwbacks, the uh, connections, but it's a completely different series. It's like parallel universe or just like like Battlestar Galactica mm. was was done. So okay. it's like a, a reimagining of it. But we have our regular hero here's the the same Digi Destin and mm. uh, their appropriate uh, Digimon. In same uh, similar relationships and such so it, it's really good so i have links to it on crunchyroll and verve as well as uh i have a link to the trailer if you just want to, want to take a look at the trailer on youtube cool and of course, the youtube will be embedded too. in the show notes on the website it's it's good so i'm gonna quickly link the mm. trailer in the uh, chat, peoples. Damon, what do you what do you got? So hear me out. <laughs> so 
um, Netflix dropped a series a, a while back called Q Force. Um, it was headed by like Sean Hayes of uh, Will and Grace and had Wanda Sykes and 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 all these other people that were that casted the voice as voices. Um, the trailer came out and it kind of got panned by like the LGBT community because uh, it just seemed very just stereotypical gay stuff that everyone you know is not a fan of. And while that's still kind of there, Jim and I actually watched the series um, over the past couple of weeks, um, an episode or two at a time. It's really not that bad. Um, there's an actual overarching story, or several story arcs, and it's some character development, and and the characters aren't one-dimensional queer representation, no things. There's whoever did this series actually gave some thought to it is it are there stereotypical things absolutely duh it's meant to you know they're casting a wider net so there you go um it, funny i was looking at the second trailer or the trailer that's on this link here from netflix this was not I repeat, not the original trailer that came out. I will I will say that right now. It is not the original trailer. It is a different trailer. I don't know if they've updated it or changed it because of all the backlash they got from people. But this one makes more sense. And and watching it, having seen the series, it it represents the series a lot more than the original trailer did. But the story, Q Force is about a um, Steve Merriweather, who was a top AIA agent, who um, comes out and then is thrust into a West Hollywood assignment because he's gay. And he builds a team and they eventually start actually going on missions after 10 years. And it kind of goes from there. Um, I, like I said, I, I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was a very good show. Um, there's a, if you've seen anything, especially for us bears, um, there's one character, Benji, who has the very, you know, stereotypical bear kind of nerd look with the thicker glasses and the beard and the short crop, well, shortish hair and wearing a hoodie and, and everyone's kind of like, this is me. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. But there's a reason for that because he looks like everybody. <laughs> yeah but it was a good show i thought it was, i really did enjoy it and i that's why i'm recommending it as a link um it it, it yeah it and you get to see a lot of like animated peen like and butt and breast and stuff so it's all good and finally the chauvinist guy uh, Buck, who's been put onto the team, the straight guy, um, is voiced by David Harbour. There you go. Okay. Of of um, Stranger Things slash um, Black well, we Widow. We talked fame. about him last week. Yeah, we yeah. just talked about him last week. Yes. Okay, so here's my question for you, Damon, because mm -hmm. I'm not getting this impression from you, based yes. on what you're saying. How do you feel about the representation of race in it? Um, eh. It's not. It's there, but it's not really there. That was the criticism I saw from persons of color. That's why I haven't watched it. Like, yeah, there. I I found that there were three camps of people who watched it, mm -hmm. or who are aware of it. I guess it's really more the who watched it. There's the camp of, oh, my God, like, this was so fun, blah, 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 like, very innocuous. Mm -hmm. Then there's the camp of, well, like, it's slightly problematic, but it kind of feels like it was made by us for us, and we're mm -hmm. trying to let others in on our own jokes, yeah. yada, yada. And then there's the third camp, which is, hell to the no, <laughs> Why are we allowing the entertainment industry to make more schlock like this at our mm -hmm. like expense? And 
fuck the bullshit about how there isn't proper representation, yada, yeah. yada. And that last part is what I saw a lot of. And I was like, OK, that's all yeah. I need to know. Like, there are some, I haven't watched it because I'm like, why would I want to give my viewing to something that isn't really supportive it's, correctly or whatever? It's been very it's, it's yeah, it's very interesting. I will say. And maybe that's why I didn't I my my mind didn't go that way. I think mm-hmm. I'm probably one of the maybe the first one, which yeah, sounds a little yeah, and narrow-minded or you know, blinder kind of thing. But when I think about it, was there representation? Yes, but not in the main cast. You had Deb, who was the um um the character that was portrayed by Wanda Sykes. Let me guess, a sassy was, black woman. She was a lesbian. Big black lesbian. That was a sassy black woman. <laughs> Somewhat, yes. Because it's voiced by Wanda Sykes. It's sort of my, like, that's yeah. sort of my, like, why I'm, I'm not picking on you. I'm just like. Yeah, but yeah. There and, seems to be some tropism. And, but. and, and she had, she actually was one of, like, again, one of the things that I did enjoy was that they, they did, ooh, uh, did give layers to some of the characters. Was it a lot of layers? No. Mm. But, you know, she was. Um, she wasn't, that's not true. She was sassy, yes, but she was also very motherly because that's kind of the whole point of her character. Um, she was the one that was helped to help calm Steve down, or Mary, which, yeah, Steve has been the real name of the character. Let's call him Steve. Um, sorry, I'm just, there's. His name is Steve Merriweather. His his name is Steve Merriweather, and they started calling him Mary because of when he came out. And I'm just like, see, okay. see that whole thing right there, <laughs> the eye roll and the hand. I'm like, <laughs> like, I don't know what to do with this. I'm like, that sounds problematic. Yeah. But it. So I'll put it like this. Um, Gary, do you did do you remember um, Super Drag? Which one was that one? With the three drag queens like Ginger, Minge, and and Shangela, and someone else voiced, and they were they yeah. transformed. Yeah, I forget. That was, the one, that was the one that was made in Brazil. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it had a very yeah. different like animation style. Yes, and it was super fucking problematic. This is a lot better, which is not saying a whole lot, <laughs> <laughs> but this. Right. Comparatively this speaking. one was, yeah. Comparatively speaking, this one was a lot better in regards to like showing representation in some ways. They they covered the gamut of a lot of the community in some in a lot of ways. And um, again, I I kind of I in I I enjoyed it for what they did. Um. Because I'll, I'll put it like this: at the end, it's, there's, there's this whole World Pride celebration, and it's got the all these people from all over, and you see the different like colors of people there. But again, it's background, right? You they're know, not actually the main characters. They're not the main characters. There's a couple of characters that are shown that are like Benji's friends, as an example. Like Benji doesn't have just white bear friends; he has friends that are of people of color. Who are introduced to Steve, who because they're dating. So spoiler there. Sorry. Um, so yeah. it kind of sounds perhaps it's more realistic. It's a little more realistic. I will say that much. Is it? But again, sorry everybody, this is taking a little bit longer than I thought it was going to. Um, but again, um, is it per? Is it? Is it going to be representational of everything? No. And are there faults? Absolutely. Like, but. Well, and that's yeah. where I'm like, maybe it is far more representative, like yeah. literal yeah. representative of the community today since we all live in mm-hmm. such bubbles. It, I don't know. It would have been nice for there to have been some differences in the, like the main cast as an example. Well, Could and they I have think, done something else? Could they I have think, picked someone else? Yeah. Right. And I think where some of the criticism comes from is having having experienced animation, original content that was very inclusive and like 
really kind of like broke barriers in some ways. Like I think of Steven Universe. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, what did it just go to my head? There was another one recently. She-Ra. Uh, yeah, the Shira like series mm-hmm. on Netflix where it was just like it wasn't in your face, but it also wasn't like a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so I think that you know it's probably getting uh, criticized or compared and it's sort of unfair, but at the same time, it's like, well, if you raise the bar, if you show it's possible to make something that's mm-hmm. like far more like accepting and representative and, you know, so on and so forth, then I think like that's where, you know, it's just a natural criticism is going to come. There's going to be some comparison. So, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I mean, I might watch it sometime, but then again, yeah, I will there's say lots, there's lots of things I don't end up getting. Yeah. Around, so, yeah, you might want to watch it. I don't I don't want to say watch it. I will say. How do I put this? Because. I'll put it like this. Watch the first episode. And and see what you think. Like the first episode gives you a good kind of basis. Um, It gets better over time. I will admit, but the first episode is a good kind of a good little way to draw you in a little bit. So, so you say that this was a fun series, but not necessarily a good series. I think it was <sighs> enjoyable to watch, but it's not necessarily good. I think it was thing. I think give it. I think it was a good series. I. Don't think it's going to be as representational as we want. If you think of it, like if you compare it to uh, like Shira and Steven Universe as an example, no. Okay, so but let me, let me rephrase. I said I, it's a I good think series. It, I think you're going going in a little bit different. I said it's a good series. Moving okay. on. Okay. Because I, I was like, like uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, some people think that Hudson Hawk is a bad movie. I probably could agree with them, but I enjoyed the hell out of watching that. That's what I mean by it. It's entertaining. Entertaining, but not necessarily good. Anyway, yeah. moving on. Gary, what do you got? Um, From Netflix, uh, my recommendation is Nailed It Season 6. If you've never seen Nailed It on Netflix... Just be prepared for the complete opposite of the Great British Baking Bake Off <laughs> like show. Um, Nicole Byer is a goddamn national treasure. She's a female comedian. Um, she's a big black girl who makes me laugh, like not just because she's a comedian, but like she's so damn silly and just doesn't care, like about how stupid she looks hosting the show. Um, I also kind of have a crush on Wes. Or as Nicole likes to say, Wes. Like she adds an H to it. It's really funny. Um, there's just something about him and his like, you know, locks of hair. Uh, who, by the way, is like an actual pro- like production staff on the show legitimately. And also has like done some modeling and acting or whatever. And is married to a very nice lady. Not that I've stalked him on my <clears> name. <throat> um, and, <laughs> and then from Disney Plus, uh, I saw Cruella. Um, oh. After it came out of Premier Access, mm. I rather liked it. Yeah. Um. Uh, everything that I had read ahead, that people were commenting on, I was in agreement. Um, it is definitely like artistic, but like uh, fun in terms of like the music, the soundtrack, the aesthetics, the look, like the this whole punk vibe of the 70s that comes in and the stunts and things that are done and Mm -hmm. the 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 reveal as to how the tragedy at the beginning of the movie actually occurred comes around in the third act of like you have to you have to see the story of the whole plot line and everything and i really wished i'd watched the animated feature first of 101 dalmatians and here's why because there are some key critical kind of things about that animated film that they used as like stepping off points or like things that spring 
into the future of the live action. It's really interesting because I really want to see the sequel to see how that goes because it led to a very interesting conversation with my best friend and I when we watched it about the whole Disney movie you know decision to take previous animated films and make them live action and the criticism that has come from that about how characters disappear and they sort of change plot lines slightly and there's you're rewriting their own history and um i listened to a podcast recently about the problem of the little mermaid and how it should be rewritten and you know anyways so all these things are kind of swirling around in my head and i really liked what they did because they seem to attempt to do more representation in this film in terms of like characters and like persons mm. of color and and anyways that you get to the very end of the film and then i was so pissed at myself cuz i didn't pick up on the on the obvious thing that happened at the very end and how it theoretically leads to a sequel which in theory is the 101 Dalmatians animated film, but it can't. It's I, I'm not trying to be obtuse, but I don't want to give too much away because you really kind of need to see some of that stuff. But I was like, get the fuck out of here. They just did that. And I was like, OK, now I'm interested to see the next live action film, because that's the one I think that is going to get more scrutiny because people are going to be comparing it to the original animated film. Which I don't think so you still have to well, you're right. I think that's going to be part of the thing is, you know, so people are like, so is Cruella really evil or not? You know what I mean? Like it it, it, it kind of. <laughs> Am I bad or was I just drawn this way? Mm, yeah. So I think that's. Uh... Well, it's kind of following along the lines of the like kind of wicked as an example. I'm going to use that as the, the example. Was she really. Evil witch. or bad, wicked witch or whatever, or was it just kind of the way that we tell the story of her to be? Well, uh, as as my best friend pointed out, you know, let's look at what they did with Sleeping Beauty. We took Maleficent, who was an evil character, and we gave a whole like background context story. And I said, actually, for the Maleficent live actions, I liked the sequel better than the original, personally. Mm. But I think that's because we moved away from the classic animated film story more. Mm -hmm. And in the second one, we got a whole other story arc about her species and like their ostracization and like, you know, the cruelty that they were subjected to and how they like had to retreat into their own world. And mm. Like, I, I like that a lot more. I think thematically it worked for me. I mean, sure, some people say it was a little heavy handed about, you know, how we treat other people that are different than us. And hello. Um, so <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm like, well, maybe we need that out there because like, uh, have you looked around the U.S. recently? <laughs> the issues that are going on. So. But those are those are the two things that I kind of watched um, that I recommend. Oh, and I forgot. Oh, I'll add it in now because, damn it, I just watched it. Uh, technically last night. Um, if you have Disney Plus, I highly, highly, highly recommend you go watch Visions, the new um, Disney animated series that they just released, which is nine episodes, if I can find it, um, of original stories told by various animation houses and that's all um in very more like what we would consider anime style um they're all different they all have very unique looks and things to them i the problem is is i started binging them and then i had to realize i needed to stop binging them because they're so good like i needed to like watch an episode and then not like watch like, like not jump into the next episode because they're short. They're like 13, 18 mm. minutes. Like, so maybe one of them's like 20 something. So they go by pretty quickly, but because they're all different <laughs> stories with all different characters and they all tell different like plots and they all have very different animation styles, like, I really feel like you need to take a moment and think about what you saw. An anthology series. Yeah. Um, because the duel, the very first one, is so riveting it's a beautiful like black and white gray motif with like spots of color and it's very um and i'm gonna get this all wrong like culturally um 
Asian, like kind of Kung Fu, like the master versus, you know, evil. And um, it's just, I don't know. I really, 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 really loved this series and I'm probably going to watch it again, which um, I don't go back and watch things a whole lot unless they personally for me, because I feel like I've seen it. Like, why do I need to see it again? I realize I'm not like that because a lot of people are like, it's my favorite movie. I've seen it 15 times. And I'm like, why? <laughs> but anyways, so I would highly recommend that people go uh, check out Star Wars Visions because I um, really think it's something pretty amazing that they did and is representative of the one major IP property that I think people don't necessarily realize. And I think I brought it up before about the difference between Star Trek and Star Wars. Star Trek seems to get a bit witchy about people doing stuff with their property IP and Disney on the other hand is like, have fun with it. And I think this is a real representation where they went to these like animation film houses and was like, we are giving you permission to play in our universe. We want to see what you will create. Um, I, I believe Lucasfilm had a lot of that where it's like, unless you're, as long as you're not stepping on anything from the original canon, uh, go make your fan films. We're, we're not going to things as long as it's clearly a fan film and do whatever you want. And I think they even had like a website was dedicated to it or something. I'm not sure how it's working right now with that everything's worth to see, but I know they did that for a long time. Which film just kind of like play in our universe. Yeah. Um, I will say that I really liked Lop and Ocho. Um, if you've seen any of the, like the, the stills or whatever, Lop is the, for lack of a better reference, rabbit like character. Um, and like, I just saw so much come out of this whole series, like this whole like season. I was like, there's so many looks that I could see people bringing to cosplay and things like that. And I will tell you this, um, it's an eight episode like season and the last one ends sort of in a way I was not really expecting cause they don't tie into anything else necessarily. Um, they do sort of take place. I feel at different times in the star Wars universe, like versus like where we know of in the cinematic, like where the films were versus like uh, the Skywalker saga storylines. Anyways. Um, it's an, again, an anthology. So it could happen at any time. But yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty good. Like really, really, really <laughs> good. I just really liked it. Um, <clears throat> sorry. I'm still kind of in shock at the end of the last one, but anyway, I was just like, wait, what? What? It was like, Manicates. that's how we ended it. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 speaking of the end, uh, I think this is the end of today's show. Playways got that this platform to our website comes out loud.com where you'll find all these links, uh, some of them embedded, so you can just go to the page and just scroll down and see everything, uh, without necessarily clicking out. That's where it comes out loud.com. You can shoot us an email with a feedback at comes out loud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 Talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can join our entourage chat and chat about many things, uh, with whatever you want, really, um, over at tinygirl.com slash telegram dash col. You can also find out when we're planning on recording these things by going to our Google Calendar at calendar, tinygirl.com slash calendar dash col. Uh, you can go to our merch store and get various accoutrements, such as a uh, volume one, version one, uh, comes out loud shirt, version two comes out loud shirt, or uh, what uh, Gary's wearing, which is a um, consent of my foreplay shirt, all in different styles. Styles, that's at Zazzle, at Zazzle.com slash comes out loud. <laughs> Don't forget some of those designs, such as the consent is my foreplay shirt, which is designed by Smashy the Bear. You can check out all sure. of his work at tiny, uh, trepublic.com slash user slash smashy the bear. You can also become a patron for, of us by going to Patreon at patreon.com slash comes out loud. Or if you want to send us some cash, it's paypal.me slash comes out loud. And you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Spotify, App, uh, Audible, and Amazon. And you can find me anywhere in the United States. Box, box, puppy, box, cup, box, something or other, or Wingem on Twitch, W Y N D G E M. Bears and Dragons will be returning October 31st 
with Arlibus. David? Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me on Theater Cub 79. That's mo- that's T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. Um, the Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gare Bear 73. Um, <clears throat> that. Thank you, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Ciao for now.